Hello Grade 11! In this video, you will learn about identifying rock-forming minerals using their physical and chemical properties. Tara! Our discussion will focus on the learning competency Identify common rock-forming minerals using their physical and chemical properties. Do you consider water as a mineral? How about tube ice or snowflakes? Are these minerals? Minerals are the fundamental components of rocks. They are naturally occurring, inorganic solid with an orderly crystalline structure in a definite chemical composition. Therefore, water is not a mineral because it is not solid and crystalline. Tube ice is also not a mineral because it is not naturally occurring. But a snowflake possesses all the properties under the definition of a mineral. Now let's discuss the physical and chemical properties of rock-forming minerals. Let's start with luster. This refers to the way light is reflected from the surface of a mineral. Types of luster, we have the metallic and the non-metallic. Examples are metallic luster pyrite and non-metallic luster kaolinite. Next is hardness. It is a measure of the resistance of a mineral to scratch. The most scale of hardness measures the scratch resistance of various minerals from a scale of 1 to 10, with talc as the softest and diamond as the hardest mineral. This was designed by mineralogist Friedrich Moss. Next is color. Minerals display a variety of colors resulting from impurities and also from geologic processes like weathering. Examples of coloring as right is purple, sulfur is yellow. We also have streak, minerals color in powdered form. Streak is a more reliable property than color because streak does not vary. Minerals that have the same color may have different colored streak. Example is this one, the hematite. Next is the crystal form or habit. It is the natural shape of the mineral before the development of any cleavage or fracture. We also have cleavage, the property of some minerals to break along specific planes of weakness to form smooth, flat surfaces. Minerals that do not exhibit cleavage are said to fracture when broken. Some break like glass, some into splinters or fibers. Last is the specific gravity, which is the ratio of the density of the mineral and the density of water, measured based on the amount of water displaced. To determine chemical properties, sample chemical test is done. For example, odor, taste, and reaction to acid. The most stable and least ambiguous basis for classification of minerals is based on their chemical compositions. Silicate, for example, is a mineral containing the two most abundant elements in the Earth's crust, namely silicon and oxygen. Over 90% of rock-forming minerals belong to this group. We also have oxides, sulfates, sulfides, carbonates, the native elements, and the halides. Now let's talk about the common rock-forming minerals. First, we have quartz. Quartz is usually called silica. It is made up of silicon dioxide, which is the raw material for making glass. Next, we have plagioclase feldspar, which is an important industrial mineral used in ceramics. Next, we have alkali feldspar. It is commonly pink to white used as a raw material to make porcelain. We also have micas. Micas are a family of silicate minerals. They are common materials in intrusive igneous rocks and also found in sedimentary. We also have the amphiboles, are a family of silicate minerals. They are a component of many igneous and metamorphic. We also have pyroxene. These crystals are commonly faceted as gemstones. For instance, precious jade is a pyroxene. Next is olivine, a silicate mineral. 
Clear and transparent olivine crystals are commonly faceted as gemstones. Last is calcite. Calcite is the major component of calcareous sedimentary rocks such as limestone. Metamorphism produces marble. And that's it. Now let's check your understanding. Direction. Identify the properties of rock-forming minerals described in the following. One refers to the way light is reflected from the surface of a mineral. Answer. That's correct. Luster. Two. Minerals color in powdered form. Answer. Very good. Strict. Number three. It is a measure of the resistance of a mineral to scratch. What's your answer? Hardness. And that's the end of our lesson. Congratulations!